Hi everyone, I'm Kat and welcome to my channel, Naturally Beautiful Girl. So today I thought I would bring you a makeup tutorial. It's been a long time since I've done one and I really wanted to do a peachy spring inspired look. And I was hoping to film this video wearing like a cute spring top, but here I am wearing a sweatshirt because it has been really cold and rainy in New England recently. I just keep telling myself that hopefully all this rain will bring some really pretty flowers this spring because the weather has been awful. Anyway, I thought I would just kind of walk you through what I'm doing. All the products I'll be using in this video will be non-toxic and cruelty free. Part of the reason I wanted to do this look is because Angelica from Mother Bay Bear's Handmade has rebranded Mother Bear's Handmade into Prisma Palette. And she has her own website now separate from Etsy and she released a whole bunch of new eyeshadows. And I don't have full sizes of all the eyeshadows but I do have the samples that um, I was sent from her so I thought we could play around with some of her shadows. Her shadows are one of the best formulas in non-toxic beauty. It really is hard to beat the quality, the pigmentation, the blendability of her shadows. Um, her mattes are super matte, super pigmented, easy to blend. Her metallics are super metallic and her shimmers are very shimmery. Like she does an awesome job. If you'd like to see how to get a peachy spring inspired makeup look, stay tuned. For foundation today, I haven't used this in a while so I thought I would reach for my oat milk um, foundation from Herre Perez and I have the shade Latte and I'm just going to dab this on my face and blend it out with a brush. The brush I've been loving is this one from MOTD Cosmetics. It's their buffing base brush. It is my all-time favorite foundation brush. The coverage of this foundation is a bit lighter but my skin is doing quite well at the moment so I don't feel like I need a lot of coverage. Coverage. Even though I do have acne, I try to embrace when my skin is doing well and use products that are a little bit lighter in coverage because I do like the look of natural skin peeking through, but I also totally get some days you just need to cover stuff up. Right now, I like how this looks. So now that I've got the foundation applied, I am going to move on to blush. If I'm using a cream blush, I like to apply my blush prior to applying my concealer. That way, in case I get my blush up too high, I can correct the situation using a concealer. So the blush I'm going to be reaching for today is this one from Cara Weiss. This is their cream blush in the shade Embrace, and it is a nice kind of rosier pink shade. It looks rather pink in the pan, but it's gonna show up more of a peach shade on me. I love this blush. Like, I really need to get more Cara Weiss products. I want to, but the price is so steep. It makes me nervous, but I love this blush. So I'm just going to tap this on to my cheeks. And although this blush is definitely a pricier blush, I find that it is worth its steep price. It is by far the best cream blush formula I have tried in non-toxic beauty. So if you have been wondering if it's worth the price, to me it is, it is a steep price and there are a lot of other really good cream blush formulas. For instance, the Hand Skin Care Cosmetics, um, their multi-stick is a really great formula. I really like the Au Naturel cream blush as well, but this one is just so easy to blend and so pigmented and so buildable and really just stays in place. It definitely is an awesome formula. And the packaging is beautiful and it's recyclable. You can pop the cartridge out and replace it and you don't have to discard the whole packaging. Next I'm going to apply concealer under my eyes and I'm going to be using the Hand Skin Care Cosmetics Concealer in the shade Fair and I will just dab this on under my eyes and then blend it out with my finger. This is definitely my most reached for concealer. I love how brightening it is and how it's actually a good shade for me and it does provide quite a bit of coverage and is brightening. Prior to setting my concealer, I am going to go in with a cream highlight. And I don't have a peach highlight per se, but I do have the Herre Perez um, Vanilla Falling Star Highlight. This isn't peach exactly, but it's not too pink and it's not too gold. So this is as close to peach as we've got, so that's what I'm going to be using today. And I honestly don't get this highlight enough love. I use it so often, but for some reason I forget to talk about it on camera. It didn't make it into my yearly favorites and I've should have put it in there, 
it deserves to be in there. I use it. So um, I'm just going to dab this onto the top of my cheekbones using my finger and then also on my Cupid's bow. This highlighter also smells like vanilla, which is of course a plus in my book, but you can really see it gives a nice glow. Like there's definitely a glow to my cheeks, but it's not too silver. It's not too gold. It is a very skin tone, but highlighty shade. And when I look straight on the camera, it is not too deep for my skin tone. Definitely a winner in my book. So I'm now going to go ahead and set my concealer and I've tried a lot of setting powders and the one that I keep coming back to is the 14E um, Aloe Nourish Prime and Set. I love this. If you've not tried it, go try it and get back to me. Like I've been testing out one from Well People and spoiler alert, it just doesn't work as well. Every time I try a different um, setting powder, I'm just like, I wish I'd used my 14E setting powder. So. I'm going to go ahead and brush this on under my eyes to set my concealer. Before I brush this on, I'm going to look up close in the mirror and make sure I smooth out any creases because you don't want to set your creases in place. I like to give my concealer a few minutes to kind of start drying down before I set it so I'm not setting something as tacky, but normally in the process I'll get a few creases so I like to just tap those out prior to putting the powder on. I forgot to mention that the brush I was using is the Real Techniques um, setting brush. I have been using this for quite a while now and it is the only brush I use for setting under my eyes. It's just perfect, it's soft, it's affordable, it's cruelty free, it checks all the boxes. And I should also mention that I have a tip for setting your concealer under the eyes. You always want to make sure your concealer is actually set. And so what I like to do is I will take my finger and just gently feel under my eyes after I've applied the powder. And if my finger sticks it all to that area, I know that I've not set it enough and I need to apply a little bit more powder, but if it just feels kind of velvety smooth, then I know that my concealer is set in place. And I find that doing that helps me to not overset the area and get it too dried out, but it also helps to ensure that everything is actually set. So now I'm going to do a little bit of spot concealing on my face. I just have a few spots left over from breakouts that I'd like to cover up a little bit more. I normally use my Hint Beauty Duet Concealer, but I've gotten back on a kick of using my PYT Beauty Concealer. And I have the shade in Fair Neutral. I'm just going to dab this onto any spots where I want a little bit more coverage. I do have oily skin, so I always always set my foundation and what I've been using recently to set my foundation has been the Eau Naturel Semi Matte Powder Foundation. I'm going to dust that on with my MOTD Set and Go brush. And when I'm applying the powder, I tend to focus it on my T-zone, um, across my forehead and down my nose and on my chin because that's where I get the oiliest, but I really don't apply much to my cheeks. I want to keep my cheeks very glowy. So I don't really put much here, but I do put a little bit on the back part of my cheeks just to kind of help blend my blush into my foundation and get everything looking seamless. And for brows, I have been trying out the Well People Brow Gel. I have the shade Brown. So I'm going to apply this in my brows and it's a thicker formula than the Juice Beauty Brow Envy Gel. I love the Juice Beauty Brow Envy Gel and I really think I like this one from Well People. It's just different. It's thicker and more pigmented, but it also holds your brows in place better. So I think it really just depends on what you want. But I definitely recommend wiping some of the excess off the spoolie. You can't get too much product on the spoolie, which then can be a bit difficult to disperse in your brows, but if you wipe it off, you'll be fine. Now for the fun part, and I think that tells you what kind of makeup lover I am because to me, 
the eyes and the eyeshadow are my favorite part to do. Also sometimes the most frustrating, but generally that's where I like to put a lot of my creativity is into my eye looks. We're gonna explore and play together. I don't have a particular look in mind, but to start off with, of course, you want a good base. And so I always use my Lima Pure Eye Primer. I use this every day, so I'm going to go ahead and apply this first. How I like to do my eye looks is I like to start with my lid and apply the metallic shimmery shades there, then go work in my crease and then touch up my lids again um, if needed. I like to do that because I like to apply metallic eyeshadows down while this base is still a little bit tacky. It really helps to intensify the shadows. I'm going to start off this look with the shade Peach Tea from Prisma Palettes. I'm not sure if this one is still made. I will link it down below if it is. It's one of the first shades I ever picked up from Mother Bear's Handmade, so we'll see if it's still available. I'm going to use my finger to apply that to like the inner two thirds of my eyelid. Now I'm actually going to take the shade Passion Fruit and I'm going to pack it on the outer corner of my eye but also kind of blend it into peach tea because I think that will give it really a peachy color. And I'm going to be using my pigment packer brush to pack it on and I will let you know if I switch brushes to blend it. That actually turned out a little bit more purpley than I was anticipating. So I'm going to grab some of um, pumpkin spice and see if I can get this warmed up a little bit. This is what happens when I'm playing around. I don't know how things are gonna turn out myself either. We might not end up with quite as peachy of a look as I was hoping, but yeah, it'll be beautiful what, no matter what it is. So I'm going to apply some of pumpkin spice also using the same pigment packing brush. That is definitely more of the color that I was going for. So now what I'm going to do is start working in my crease. And I'm first going to take the shade Alabaster, which is this creamy white, and dust this just all over my crease. It's just gonna help get everything blended really smoothly. Not that these shadows really need it, but I need it because I'm just not great um, at blending sometimes, especially when I'm doing more intense eye looks. I like to help myself out any way I can. And I am going to be using the MOTD come through contour brush for this step. And I forgot to mention that all these little samples of eyeshadow that I'm using are from her Warm Fair palette. Angelica created a number of different palettes that have different undertones but are also targeted for different skin tones. You can purchase any of these shades individually but what's really nice about these curated palettes is if you know you like warm tones and you have fair skin, for instance this selection of colors is really designed to work well on fair skin if you like warm shades. Especially if you're a beginner and you just look at single eyeshadow pans and are like I have no idea how to purchase shadows that will all really work together. These are already pre-selected, pre-coordinated. So I really appreciate that. I thought that was a nice addition to her Prisma palette shop. Okay, so now that we've gotten that laid down, um, we're gonna start building some color. We are going to first start off with the shade Tan, which is just a you know nice tan shade and apply that throughout the crease. Um, I am going to be using the MOTD Seamless Sheer Blend Brush. MOTD came out with some new eyeshadow brushes and I've been really loving them. I didn't realize that I wanted more variety in my eye brushes until I picked these up. I have been really loving the Seamless Sheer Blend Brush because it's fluffier 
than the Blending Bessie brush. Here's the Blending Bessie brush here, and here's the Sheer Blend brush. And so what that allows you to do is disperse and blend more easily. So if you have had problems blending your eyeshadow and you want a good cruelty-free brush, this one has really been helping me out a lot. And now I'm going to pick up the shade Apricot, 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 how would I say that? Apricot. Let me know in the comment section down below. Do you say Apricot or Apricot? Now, I, now I've confused myself. I'm going to take this shade here and apply it using my blending Bassy brush. And I'm using this brush instead because I don't want to do as much of an overall wash as I did with tan. I want to focus it a little bit lower down in my crease. And this brush is perfect for doing that. Now I'm going to take the shade Cafe Olay, which is this deep chocolate brown, and apply this to my lower lash line just to emphasize my lower lash line. And I am going to use my MOTD straight to the point brush. Finally, I'm going to take the shade Magnolia, which is a very light shimmery, kind of cream shimmery shade and apply that to my inner corner as my inner corner highlight. And I'm going to use my MOTD Pencil Me In brush to do that. Whenever I use Prisma palette eyeshadows, I am just blown away. Like every single time my eye looks are so good. Honestly, if I didn't tell you that I was wearing non-toxic, vegan, cruelty-free eyeshadows, would you know? These could be the top conventional eyeshadows in terms of how they perform. The looks I can get using these are just stunning. I'm going to pop off camera for a minute and apply some mascara. I am going to be using my Honest Beauty mascara and I'll be right back. I feel like you guys are gonna appreciate this. Um, after I applied my mascara, I played around for a solid minute trying to figure out what I was going to use for my lip color. This look didn't turn out quite as peachy as I had initially hoped, so I was kind of hoping to wrap it back up, get it back to the peach with my lip color. So we're gonna be doing a bit of a combination. I'm first going to be applying the Clove and Hallow lipstick in the shade Ballerina Slippers. And then I'm going to be following it up with the Well People gloss in the shade I don't know what it is because apparently this gloss doesn't have a shade name on it anywhere. I will look it up and put it in the description box down below. Um, but it's a peachy gloss from Well People. Okay, so this is just the lipstick here, and now I'm gonna to top it off with this gloss, which should make it a bit more peachy. It's still a little pinker than I would like, but this combination somehow made my lips look really large. Let me know in the comment section down below if you think so too. Also, don't worry, I did wipe off my doe foot applicator prior to sticking it back into my lip gloss so I didn't get the lipstick in the lip gloss. Cause that drives me nuts too. Okay, so overall, I really like this look. It didn't quite turn out as peachy as I'd initially hoped, but you know, I'm a small YouTuber. I don't have every shade of everything. So working with what I've got, I do love how this looks. I love wearing pink and more kind of rosy pink shades, but also in the spring, I like kind of peachy looks too, especially moving into summer as well. So I hope you enjoyed seeing this look and especially me giving a little bit of an eye tutorial using the new Prisma palette shadows. Let me know in the comment section down below if you've also been in kind of a peachy warm makeup mood. 
And let me know if you've checked out Prism palettes yet. Um, if you haven't, I suggest going over there and checking them out. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also check out my Instagram. I'll have my handle down below. I'm at Naturally Beautiful Girl. I have more non-toxic, cruelty-free content there. And be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my videos. And once again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.